Hi, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked what it is that I do specifically for my devotion time. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna walk you through exactly what my process is for doing my devotions. <laughs> she is usually part of it. Um, my dog uh, actually likes to uh, lay at my feet while I do my devotions, but I think she was curious because I was talking to something and so she wanted to see what I was talking about. So here are some of my uh, supplies. First things first, I always sit in the same location. Um, it's really important to have an established location where you always sit and have your devotional time. I have several components to my devotional time um, that are super important for me, but here are just some of the things you will need. I always have a journal. Um, my favorite journal is Moleskin. Um, I'll show you this more closely in a little bit. Of course, you always need your Bible. Um, I prefer a Bible with study notes um, so that as I am um, going through the scriptures that I'm reading at the time, um, I can read at the bottom uh, the study notes. I always have a devotional book. Right now, I'm uh, using Henry Nouwen's You Are the Beloved. Um, I always have a devotional book I use. Then I also have a prayer journal, and uh, you'll need to look in the comments, but I love uh, Val Werner or Val Marie paper. Um, you can look and see here, um, but this prayer journal is really amazing, and again, I'll show it to you in a little bit. And then I usually have a book that I am reading. Um, that doesn't mean I'm always going to get to it in my devotional time, but I always keep it there. Right now, I'm reading Val Werner's um, The Finishing School. Um, so those are the supplies I keep with me. Um, another thing I have, again, that I don't always get the time to get to, but I have uh, the books of the Bible, um, each in their own volume. These are called Illuminated Scripture Journals. And what I love about it is each page of the scripture also has blank journaling space. And so these are just, I don't use all of them all the time, um, but they're just some supplies I like to have with me. Um, I also have in this little box, I have post-it notes as well as apparently some tape that was stuck in there. <laughs> I have a pencil sharpener and I have some tabs that I can use in my books. And then I have pencils here and then my favorite pens, which if anyone knows me, these are the only pens I use. Uh, they are precise V5 pens. So these are just the supplies I like to have with me. And like I said, you need to keep them at the same space so it's readily available. So what you want to do is make it as easy as possible for you to have your devotional time every single day with Jesus. So now I'm sitting in my prayer chair in my corner at my table. And what do I do first? So I get out my journal and I am going to go ahead and write the date down. And then I'm going to concentrate on praising Jesus for who he is. So I'll write down Jesus today, you are my constant. In a world that changes all the time, you are the one thing that remains the same. And I'll write that down, who Jesus is. And I might spend a little or a lot of time on that depending on my day. The next thing I'll do is I will write down gratitudes, but more specifically, I'm looking at what Jesus has been up to in the last day since last I sat down. What can I glorify him for? What can I magnify him for? And sometimes it's as simple as Jesus, I'm so glad you helped me get out of bed this morning, or thank you, Jesus, that I have a warm home or that I have a warm bed. Other days, it's miraculous. My husband was recently healed of the COVID-19 virus. That's definitely in my journal. In fact, I can go back a couple of days and show you where I wrote it down. So let's review. Number one, who Jesus is, uh, shepherd or deliverer or king. I take some time to praise him. Number two, I write down those gratitudes, but I look more specifically at what Jesus is doing. It's not just that I'm thankful, but I'm looking for what he is doing. This is all going in my journal. And again, you can spend a little time or a lot of time on that. The third thing I do is I get out my Bible. Now, a lot of people don't know where to start when it comes to Bible reading and they do the whole, like, let the Bible fall open. And that's where I'm going to read today. 
I would discourage you from doing that. What I would encourage you to do is get on some sort of Bible reading plan, whatever that is. Don't put pressure on yourself. You see, I like to really meditate on scripture when I read it. I don't like to have big, big chunks. Now, there have been times in my life when I've read the whole Bible in three months. So I'm reading for a different purpose, right? I'm reading to just take in all the information as it is in the Bible. But most days I sit down and I read a chapter and I really, really meditate on it. So how do I do that? Well, right now I'm in the Psalms. I'm reading the Bible all the way through and I'm in Psalm 111. So I read that today. And first what I did after I read the scripture is I wrote down my observations. So for instance, I observed that verse 10 really stuck out to me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. That really resonated with me. So I wrote it down. I write down other observations, words that stick out to me. You don't need to worry about being a theologian. You just need to listen to Jesus. What words, phrases, punctuation, what sticks out to you? What do you observe? And then I write down, Jesus, what are you trying to say to me in this scripture? I take a little time. I listen to him. I think about it and I write it down. Now, this could be the end of your devotional time for today. So the most important thing is your Bible reading. However, I would encourage you to make this such a priority that I spend anywhere from a half hour to an hour every day. Now, some of you go, whoa, whoa, Carrie, that's way too overwhelming. But is it? Is it? My survival tool is Jesus. And if he is the only reason that I make it through the day, then why don't I want to equip myself by sitting underneath his faucet for long amounts of time? Now, if you have a shorter amount of time, I suggest go back, look through the different elements I've shown you, and maybe you can do one or two elements every single day. I'm just telling you what I do. So after I've walked through the scripture, I've prayed through it, I've written down, Jesus, what obediences are you calling to me? You know, based on this scripture, looking here um, at the end of verse 10, it says to him belongs eternal praise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So my obedience would be Jesus. Help me to have a healthy fear of you so that I can have wisdom so that I can give you eternal praise. And I would write that in my journal. Next, once I've worked through the word, then I will go into my devotional book. Like I said, right now, this is an incredible devotional. So I'll go to the actual day. So today was April 4th and I will read that devotional book. Now, because I like to keep everything in my journal, if something really sticks out to me, I might underline it like I did here on April 1st. I might underline the things that are most important to me, but I also like to transfer those over into my journal because then if I ever take my journal with me somewhere, um, you know, if I'm going on a trip and I can't take everything with me, but I can take my Bible and my journal, I have a lot to reflect upon. After I look at my devotional and I write down what resonates with me, it is time for prayer. That time is super important. Now. I talked earlier about Valmarie Paper. What I love about her journal is that every single month, um, she basically has um, some prayer prompts for you to write down. So there's a challenge for you with prayer, how to pray for the world and the nation, how to pray for your community, your family. And so you start listing those and you have whole pages of personal prayer requests and goals. Um, there's a page where you write down your adoration to Christ. You write down answered prayers. Um, it is a really great way to organize your prayer life. So what do I do? Well, I, at the beginning of the month, I write as much down as I can. Of course, a lot of it still comes to me during the month. So you know those times people ask you, would you pray for me? Immediately, I write it down in my prayer journal because then I'm not going to forget. I also have good advice. When everyone when anyone ever asks you to pray, pray for them right then and there, verbally, out loud, because that will give you a reminder later. Jesus will bring them back to your mind. So I've written down all my prayer requests and I write down my prayers in my journal. So I usually divide it up. I might pray for something specifically one day. Sometimes it's something that's on my heart. And then one thing I really love to do as I'm praying is I will sometimes text my prayers to those specific people 
as I'm praying. What an awesome way to show them that you are praying for them on a regular basis. Now, if I get through all of that, which I don't do every day, the priority is the word, the priority is prayer, but sometimes I have a little extra time, that's when I will always have a book nearby. Um, now, I will tell you this, the book is the least of my priorities. The word and prayer are always my priorities. But if I have extra time, I might read a chapter in a book um, to get a little more insight. Again, I write down my observations in my journal. I also showed you this illuminated scripture book. Often when I am walking through some scripture, um, I will write down in the book. So I've got a marker in here. So under in Isaiah 29, I had written down some notes about some things that Jesus was showing me in that particular scripture. So that is what it looks like for me to sit down and do my devotional time. Now, let me say to you again, Sometimes I only get through the scripture piece and the journaling piece. I always make sure I journal something every single day because I want to be able to go back and look. Some of the struggles that we have are because we don't remind ourselves of what Christ has historically done. What has he done in our lives that we can go and reference later and, and dig into the promises and realize he's never left me. He was always there. He was answering prayer. He was giving me scripture at just the right time. I always write it down in my journal and I write it down in my Bible. And what an encouragement it is later on to go back to a scripture and see something like healing. In fact, if you look at Psalm 98, I wrote down when my husband was diagnosed with COVID-19, I wrote down praise God before we see evidence of healing. So when I go back to Psalm 98 and I see that, what an encouragement it is. So when we chronicle our time with Jesus, it's just preparing us for the future of what he might teach us. Now, some of you are super intimidated. Start with a little bit, but I'll tell you this. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you want to spend time with Jesus. Thank you for being with me today. If you have any other devotional ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, but I've had so many ask me, Carrie, what do you do for your time with Jesus? I just thought I would share. Um, there are links to the resources in the comments uh, on the YouTube video. So if you wanted to know where you could get some of these other resources, um, I'll leave some links in the comments. But thank you so much for watching and uh, bless you. Jesus is the only thing I have to survive. So I have to sit at his feet every single day.